Hello guys, in this video we'll learn about executor in Rust. The purpose of this video is to dive into futures executors and talk about the existing executors which we often use while programming async in Rust. And then we'll implement our own executor and while doing so we'll learn about multiple other concepts of async context in Rust. So there is lots to cover in this video. Make sure you stick around and watch till the end. And as we start, there's a link to my discord and description. Make sure to join it. First of all, let's talk about futures. So future is basically just an asynchronous block, which will execute and have some result in the future. That's as simple as that. We all have used Rust or different other programming languages, which have the concept of futures. As you can see right here, we have an async block inside future to simulate some heavy task or a task that consumes some resources or is, you know, requiring some time. We just sleep for some time and then we are returning 20. When the future is executed, we'll have the result as 20. And if we try to run this code, as you can see here, we just get outside future immediately. We don't get inside future printed we don't get like wait for one second so what are we missing here an executor which can execute our future because this block will just execute in future because as we just talked the definition something that will have some result in the future but now it's just a block that will be executed later and for that we need an executor or we have to await for the operation to finish in an async runtime so we'll take a couple of examples of how existingly we are solving this problem uh, with different crates and then we'll implement our own executor. So the most common way is using Tokyo where we execute our future in an async runtime. And how do we do this is make our man async and then add Tokyo man on top, which initiate a Tokyo runtime. And then we can just do let result is equals to future await to execute the future and result as result let's run this and there you go outside future inside future and then you should have noticed there was some delay of one second so basically outside future then here we go inside the future we print inside future we wait for one second and then we have our result which is 20. now as we know macros are here to make our life easy so that's what tokyo man does here it's creating a tokyo runtime and then blocking or executing our futures with executors that's exactly how it works it uses an executor to execute our future and we can also have an equivalent implementation if we were not using uh, this macro then how would we do this so the equivalent implementation would be we remove this and we make our main on async and we have our future and right here we just create an async runtime so let runtime and then we just say runtime new and unwrap We'll talk about runtime in detail in a future video, but here just to show you guys how the Tokyo man macro that we saw execute in reality. So what happens is we can just do runtime dot block on and here we can pass our future. And let's save this and we run this. There you go. It works in the same way. So that's exactly what happens behind the scenes when we do Tokyo man macro. Similarly, if you don't want to use Tokyo, then another way is to use futures, which is another crate. And what we do here is we can just remove this and instead of using Tokyo, we can use the sleep. So let's change this. And here we just do sleep and duration would be from seconds again one second and right here we just do block 
on which is an executor from futures as you guys can see it's an executor which is something that we have been discussing run a future to completion on the current thread so what we do is future and that's literally all that we need block on the future and let's save this and now if we do cargo run there you go outside future inside future and result as 20 it works exactly the same way now let's get into this block on now the implementation would not be exactly similar for these grades to what will design our own executor but the concept remains the same so let's build one of our own executors so let's have our own executor as we try to understand how executors really work. So fn future uh, executor, you can name this anything that you want. And an f future. And we are passing a mutable future f. And then the output would be future output. Now, first of all, we need a vector. So here we'll have a noop vector. We'll just say let vector is equals to noop vector. So vector is an object that allows waking up the task when it's ready to make progress. It's required for polling futures because an async runtime needs to know when a future is ready to be polled again. So next we need is a context so let mutable ctx or cx context from vector and here we pass vector and why do we need a context now here the context truck wraps the vector and provides it to the future during polling a future might return let's say poll pending meaning it's not ready yet the vector allows it to signal the runtime when it's ready to be polled again. So that's why we, we use this context struct to wrap our vector. Now the next step is to pin our future in the memory. So we'll just say let mutable pin the future and unsafe pin new unchecked and right here we'll just pass and mutable future. So why do we do this? Why do we pin our future in the memory? Now future must be pinned in the memory because they may contain self references. And since pin unchecked is unsafe, we must ensure future will not be moved after being pinned. So for that reason, we are wrapping it and pinning it in the memory. Now the next step is to pull our future to completion. So before that, let's fix this. We made a mistake here. It's not mux, it's mute. And right here, we'll just do loop. And we'll use our pinned future. So match pin future dot as mutable dot pole. And pass our uh, wrapped vector, which is the CDX. And if it's poll ready, then we have some value and we'll just return the value, which means future completed and we return the result. If that's not the case and it's pending, then we can just do is uh, thread and yield now. This we do because future is not ready and yield to allow the other work. So as simple as that and we write it out and now let's use our own future executor so instead of block on here we'll just use our own future executor and we'll pass our future so let's do cargo run and there you go outside future inside future and we get our result there is just this warning, which again, we can just remove this extra import. And all right, and we run. There you go. It works the same way as it was working when we were using uh, Tokyo or even the futures. So this is how your basic future uh, executes using executor. So this is a simple 
and straightforward implementation and understanding of how a future executor works now this executor might not be as smart as you know block on from tokyo or block on from futures but still we get on high level what happens how the execution works and if you do like the video share with your friends i'll catch you guys in another video with another interesting topic where we either build something or break down something like this so bye bye